Good evening and welcome to Horizonte, a show that takes a look at current issues through a Hispanic lens. I'm your host, Catherine Anaya. A new book has been released that celebrates the first Chicano literature professor at Arizona State University. Margarita Cota Cárdenas is one of the first Chicano writers to emerge in the 1960s and 1970s. La Plonqui, the literary life and work of Margarita Cota Cárdenas, takes a look at her contribution to Chicano literature and culture. It's co-edited by Vanessa Fonseca Chavez, an associate professor of English at Arizona State University, and Jesus Rosales, an associate professor of Spanish in the School of International Letters and Cultures. We will talk to Rosales, but first we hear from Cota Cárdenas herself. It was Jesus that came to me with the, the book idea. I told him, nadie lo va a comprar. Nobody's going to buy it. Nobody's going to publish it. I was a single mom. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. It's just, it was hard, you know. Oh, my biggest achie achievement is my kids. All of them, you know. I feel between Tom and I, we did a good job pulling a family together. And I miss him like heck. And I get emotional about it. But my biggest achievement is my kids. And then as far as the writing, what can I say? I mean, I had to write, and I guess I could do it because, you know, I got published. I was one of the very first Chicana feminists, and I hit it off. It was the year of the woman in 75, and my stuff just caught on. So. I'm fortunate. I don't know that I was that talented or anything, but it was just my time, I guess, you know. My most intimate, personal stuff has been in Spanish. And I think the best stuff, that I have a better emotional expression, it brings me peace to write, you know, but it's like in the process, of, it can be very emotional. So I stopped at this junk store that was on the side of the road on my way back home to Modesto. And I looked around and oh my God, there was an old typewriter there. It was covered with dust, a little bit of grime. And I asked the guy, he comes out, you know, I said, does this work? And he said, yes, I think so. So we tried it, hunt and peck, you know, and it worked. And that's my leche. And joining me now to talk more about the book is Jesus Rosales. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome. Uh, welcome there. Thank you very much for the invitation, yes. It is good to see you. So I want to talk about the title of the book, La Plonqui. That is a family nickname of Margaritas. Why did you choose to use that particular name and use it in the title? Well, first of all, it's a, um, it's a name that was given to her by her aunt and uncles who used to play tunes and they, uh, Margarita used to dance with her uh, brother. And uh, I think the title, uh, Plonky, which is a playful song, dance, I mm -hmm. think, um, captures the spirit of the book, captures who Margarita is. You know, she's very playful, she's very witty in her, in her uh, 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 writing, and uh, uh, traviesa, you know, <laughs> mischievous in a way, uh, coqueta, flirt. And uh, the photo that it's also on the cover, you know, just personifies that. So it was a real catchy name, I believe, you know, to also capture the spirit. But also, you know, behind all that stuff, there's a lot of seriousness behind mm -hmm. that, you know. So yeah, I think it was a perfect uh, word for it. Well, and you, you capture the seriousness of uh, her story also on the cover as well with a picture of the typewriter. Right. It's a picture that you took and explain the, the background of that particular typewriter. Well, basically, uh, Margarita uh, told me that she, that was a typewriter that she used when she was writing her first uh, book of poetry and her first novella. And uh, basically, uh, you know, inspired her to write, you know, and uh, she called it La Malinche. You know, she also had a nickname for it, you know, as a, as a playful uh, partner. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, her because she is a pioneer. How would you describe her importance to Chicano culture, to Chicano literature? 
Well, uh, Margarita is uh, it's part of the uh, Chicano movement writers from the 60s, 70s, and I believe that she's a painter in a sense that she was one of, some of the first writers who, uh, who introduced courses also in, at the university level and of Chicano writers. And uh, not only that, is that her writing as different or as opposed to other Chicano writers is in Spanish. You know, she wrote most of her stuff in Spanish and it's Spanglish. So it was a real challenging uh, writing for her and for the readers as well. Mm -hmm. you know? And it really put her on the map, so to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. As I mentioned, she became the first professor at Arizona State University to create a Chicana literature class. What year was that and how significant is that to what was happening? Like you said, there was a Chicano movement happening at the time. How significant is it to, to have something like that exist during that time? Well, Margarita actually started teaching at ASU in, the in 1980, I believe. Yeah. So she, she was coming from, from the Chicano movement and introducing many of the mentality of the movement and so forth. And uh, what is important about it is that it uh, introduced all these uh, uh, themes that made it very important and relevant for many of the students who were studying at the time. So um, in our program, for example, where she taught in Spanish, in, in the Spanish program, uh, they were the, she was offering the first Chicano courses in the Spanish program in Spanish. And that was a very pioneer uh, thing. And what kind of an influence did that have on the students who were taking her class? Well, they had a lot of influence because of the fact that uh, Chicanos who come from a background of Mexican, Latin American, Spanish background, uh, valued the language, the culture, as opposed to taking it, for example, in English, in English classes, in, in, in English departments. So I believe that the impact uh, made, it, uh, made her a pioneer in terms of opening spaces for, for many of the Chicanos and Chicanas of the time. She went on to become an accomplished uh, poet and author. How would you say her literature helped to, you know, you talk about the influence on the students, but how did she also educate others about the Chicano movement about maybe some perceptions that were out there that were not necessarily accurate? Well, uh, many of the things that she did, you know, because of the fact that she wrote in Spanish, she was uh, influencing many of these uh, Spanish speaking world about the Chicanos, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, in terms of Chicano literature, most of it is written in English. So many of the authors who actually wrote in English were already uh, setting up the problematics of Chicano literature to English speaking audiences. But Margarita offered a different space. So for the Spanish speaking audiences in Latin America and Spain and, and here in the United States, it's just opened the same kind of problematics, but in a different language. We should also point out that we are talking about her. She is still very much with us. Yes. Uh, she is no longer teaching, but she is still obviously very influential. She started a publishing company uh, at a time when there were few women uh, Chicano writers doing what she was doing, and she really wanted to help elevate the voices. Did exactly. she help change the landscape for that? Well, the, the uh, again, I emphasize the fact that Margarita wrote in Spanish, you know, because of the fact that she wanted to reach a different type of audience also. So her Scorpion Press, uh, who, which, uh, which started here in Arizona, opened, uh, opened the spaces for Chicanos who actually wrote in Spanish, you know, because of the fact, I mean, not many were already being published because of the fact they were not editorial uh, houses that published, but even, you know, if you wrote in Spanish, that became even very difficult to publish. So that's what, uh, that's where the impact, I think, uh, of her of poetry and her uh, writings. Well, and on top of that, I mean, she was writing about some serious political issues as well, not only uh, the injustices that she was seeing, but she was also talking about immigration. And that was probably at a time uh, when maybe it wasn't as discussed as it is now, but still just as relevant today, yeah. right? Yes, it's very much relevant, yes. Of course, the the uh, problematics and, uh, you know, even the, her latest book, uh, which was published maybe four, four or five years ago, uh, was talking about uh, SB 1070 you know, and things like that. So so, um, yeah, very influential. And you reference her work in your classes that you teach. Yes. How uh, influential was she for you personally? 
Very much because of the fact that she was challenging all of us you know, in terms of uh, not only uh, reading things that through a lens that, well, let me say in Spanish, there's a saying, no tiene pelos en la lengua, meaning, you know, she said it the way it was. She wasn't really trying to mask anything, any problems and everything. So it's very challenging to read her because she uses a lot of slang, a, a lot of bilingualism, a lot of English, a lot of Spanish. So when you read her uh, stuff, it, it, it becomes very difficult. So for me, it was a challenge. And uh, since I was trained in the Spanish program, it was very important for me to try to promote Chicano literature in Spanish because of the fact that it's part of our identity that is being lost. So uh, she influenced me in that sense. So I try to emphasize that in my, in my classes. And luckily at ASU, you know, we teach Chicano literature in the Spanish program, you know, which gives us the opportunity to, to write in Spanish, to read in Spanish. And, and just gives a little, a different perspective. To, she certainly to did change the landscape, especially here at the university. So as we mentioned, she is still with us. Yes. What is her reaction to the fact that you have written, co-written this book and uh, you know, the celebrations that are happening around it? She loves it, you know, she can, she can believe it. When, when I go and talk to her, uh, she, when, when I started to talk to her about the project, she actually felt like, you know, I, yeah, nobody's gonna listen to me, nobody's gonna read me. Uh, she felt very humbled and uh, she felt very honored, you know, and of course we feel very honored to celebrate her work. Well, congratulations, and mm -hmm. of course you can find the book wherever books are sold. Yes. And uh, I appreciate you coming on and sharing the background to why you wrote the book and yes. why we need to celebrate and mm -hmm. honor the mm -hmm. contributions that Margarita mm -hmm. has made mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. Chicano literature. Mm -hmm. No, thank you very much. And if you allow me, can I we give her Margarita the last words on this uh, conversation Absolutely. by reading a very short poem of the way she believes of poetry? That would be yeah. wonderful. Okay, thank it, you. It's a, it's an opening of the book, and uh, I'll read it in Spanish, very short, and then I have a translation at okay. the bottom. Okay. So the poem is called Inspiración y Fiebre, and it says, Poesía, como siempre me saludas. Con un hola llegué, y yo, sorprendida, cojo papel y pluma para contarte de nuevo a me. The translation, the, uh, it's called Inspiration and Fever. Poetry, like always, you greet me with a hello, I arrived. And I, surprised, pick up paper and pen to tell you once again, I loved. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> yes. La Plonqui. La Plonqui. Yes, the spirit is in her words. It is. Absolutely. It is. She's a wonderful lady. Jesus, mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. No, thank you very much for having me. Good to see okay. you. And that's our show for tonight for Horizonte and Arizona PBS. I'm Catherine Anaya. Have a great night.